Hi and welcome. This video highlights the significance of the release of .NET 5, which is expected in November of this year. I've included this content as part of the C-Sharp Advanced course because I feel that this .NET upgrade is a game changer for .NET developers. For future content on advanced C-Sharp topics and more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you can be notified of future content. This will not be a code-focused tutorial. I feel that in order to put C-Sharp in its correct context, we must understand the underlying plumbing, as it were, and how future .NET upgrades will affect us as C-Sharp developers. With the release of .NET 5 this year, I thought it would be prudent to cover how this will change the context of our C-Sharp applications. I created a short video clip from my introduction to C-Sharp video last year that provides a brief overview of .NET Framework and .NET Core. Please see a card that can be seen in the upper right hand corner of your screen to navigate to this video if you are interested. A link to this video has also been included below in the description. So .NET 5 is expected to be released in November 2020. The first preview of .NET 5 is expected to be available in the first half of 2020 and will be supported by Visual Studio 2019 and Visual Studio Code. Here are some key features of .NET 5. A single unified platform for everything including Windows, Mac, Web, Mobile, Cloud, IoT, Gaming, Machine Learning and Data Science. Managed by open source community and supported by Microsoft. Cross-platform with any device anywhere. Supports all major platform capabilities for .NET Framework, .NET Core and Xamarin including Windows Forms, WPF, UWP, ASP.NET MVC, Entity Framework, Link and so on. Scalable, fast and high performance. Smaller development and packages. Support for the most productive IDEs and tools including Visual Studio, VS Code, VS for Mac and Command Line Interface, CLI. Okay, let's go back in time to just before May 23rd, 1995. So what is the significance of this date? Well, this is the date that Java first appeared. So what does the phrase close to the metal mean? And what does it have to do with anything? When programmers say a programming language or platform is close to the metal, this means the developer is able to programmatically manage an operating system's memory. So when Java came along in 1995, this was a huge deal. Compiled Java code ran within its own environment called the JVM. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. In 1995, the JVM introduced two revolutionary concepts that have since become standard for modern software development write once, run anywhere, and automatic memory management. Before .NET Framework was released by Microsoft, on February the 13th, 2002, Visual Basic 6 had been released in 1998. Visual Basic is a third-generation, event-driven programming language developed for Microsoft's Component Object Model, COM. The first version of Visual Basic was released in 1991. Visual Basic was not a fully object-oriented language and was event-driven. It was also tightly coupled with the Visual Basic IDE. So .NET Framework was a massive upgrade from this and the .NET Framework common language runtime resembled the Java virtual machine in many ways. Automatic memory management was achieved for Windows platforms, but write once, run anywhere had not yet been enabled through .NET. The .NET Framework could only run on Windows platforms. So the top similarities between the .NET Framework CLR Common Language Runtime and Java's JVM, Java Virtual Machine, include They are both virtual machines. They both include garbage collection. They both employ stack-based operations. They both include runtime level security. They both have methods for exception handling. The .NET Framework provides developers with an abstraction that sits above the operating system a virtual machine, i.e. the common language runtime, and a suite of APIs, i.e. BCLs or base class libraries. The .NET Framework provides thousands of base class libraries that aid the developer with common development tasks, interoperability, 
multiple .NET languages, for example, VB.NET, F Sharp, and of course C Sharp, can be included and interact with each other in the same application. This is possible because the higher level .NET languages are first compiled into the intermediate language. The intermediate language is then compiled at runtime into machine language through just-in-time compilation. The .NET framework also provides memory management, security, and exception handling. .NET framework, although a massive evolution from VB6 and COM, is not modular and is not cross-platform. It has to be installed in its entirety and it can only run on a Windows platform. The latest version of the .NET Framework is version 4.8. This version was released on April 18th, 2019. So let's go back in time to the release of Mono. Mono was first released on June the 30th, 2004. It is a free and open source project to create an ECMA standard compliant .NET Framework compatible software framework including a C-sharp compiler and a common language runtime. Originally created by Zimian, it was later acquired by Novell and is now being led by Xamarin, a subsidiary of Microsoft and the .NET Foundation. The stated purpose of Mono is not only to be able to run Microsoft .NET applications cross-platform, but also to bring better development tools to Linux developers. Mono can be run on many software systems including Android, most Linux distributions, BSD, Mac OS, Windows, Solaris, and even some game consoles such as PlayStation 3, Wii, and Xbox 360. So Mono provided a .NET runtime implementation, which allowed c -sharp code to be compiled and implemented on multiple platforms. .NET Core's initial release was in June 2016. .NET Core is a free and open source managed computer software framework for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS operating systems. It is a cross-platform successor to the .NET framework. .NET Core is similar to Mono in that it enables cross-platform portability. It is an open source and cross-platform framework enabling the developer to build applications that can run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. .NET Core can be said to be a more agile version of .NET Framework because only the components required for a particular application need to be deployed to the target computer. .NET Core has been optimized for the cloud and can also run inside a Docker container, which makes it an ideal runtime environment for microservices. The latest release of .NET Core is version 3.1 and was released on the 3rd of December 2019. So at this point, we have .NET Framework Mono and .NET Core providing different implementations of .NET. So you can see how it could be difficult for developers, for example, to be sure if a particular .NET base class library component dependency would be supported across relevant .NET implementations. So in order to create uniformity across these implementations of .NET, Microsoft introduced the .NET standard. .NET standard is a set of APIs that all .NET platforms have to implement. It was introduced to unify the .NET platforms and prevent future fragmentation. For more comprehensive information on what is supported by the .NET standard, please check out this table that can be found at this URL. .NET standard was a great step forward in terms of providing uniformity across .NET platforms. But wouldn't it be great to have one framework to rule them all? .NET 5 is such a framework and is expected to be released this year. So why .NET 5 and not .NET Core version 4? Microsoft is following the version progression of the .NET Framework, where as mentioned earlier, the latest release of the .NET Framework is version 4.8. So this is why the next release of .NET is .NET 5. It follows from the .NET Framework versioning rather than the .NET Core versioning. So what is the significance of .NET 5? .NET 5 will be open source and you will be able to use it to target Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, Android, tvOS, watchOS, and WebAssembly, and more. I recommend reading this blog from Richard Lander, the program manager of the .NET team. This blog post was written on the 6th of May 2019 and can be found at this URL. Here are some significant quotes from the blog post. From the inception of the .NET Core project, 
we've added around 50,000 .NET Framework APIs to the platform. .NET Core 3.0 closes much of the remaining capability gap with .NET Framework 4.8, enabling Windows Forms, WPF, and Entity Framework 6. .NET 5 builds on this work, taking .NET Core and the best of Mono to create a single platform that you can use for all your modern .NET code. We intend to release .NET 5 in November 2020, with the first preview available in the first half of 2020. It will be supported with future updates to Visual Studio 2019, Visual Studio for Mac, and Visual Studio Code. The blog post goes on to say the following. Everything you love about .NET Core will continue to exist. Open source and community oriented on GitHub, cross-platform implementation, support for leveraging platform-specific capabilities such as Windows Forms and WPF on Windows, and the native bindings to each native platform from Xamarin. High performance, side-by-side -side installation, small project files SDK style, capable command line interface CLI, Visual Studio, Visual Studio for Mac, and Visual Studio Code integration. Here's what will be new. You will have more choice on runtime experiences. Java interoperability will be available on all platforms. Objective-C and Swift interoperability will be supported on multiple operating systems. Core FX will be extended to support static compilation of .NET ahead of time AOT, smaller footprints, and support for more operating systems. We will ship .NET Core 3.0 this September, referring to September last year, 2019, .NET 5 in November 2020, and then we intend to ship a major version of .NET once a year, every November. And note the depiction of the release schedule timeline. In 2021, .NET 6, 2022, .NET 7. So no more .NET Framework or .NET Core, but rather one unified open source cross-platform framework. .NET 5 is a welcome release. So please let me know in the comments your thoughts on .NET 5. I think the move to unify features from .NET Framework, Mono, and .NET Core into one framework is a big step forward. So in the next part of this advanced c -sharp course, we are back to looking at code. In the next tutorial, part 3 of this c advanced course, we'll explore delegates. To be notified of future content like this, please consider subscribing and ring the bell. If you feel you have gained value from viewing this video, please hit the like button, it will be greatly appreciated. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. Thank you and take care.